Dr. Don Fletcher, an ophthalmologist and specializing in low vision rehabilitation, uh, presently practicing in uh, San Francisco, California and Wichita, Kansas. Uh, my uh, background has uh, my training in Canada, uh, where I did medical school and uh, ophthalmology residency. I then did a uh, retina fellowship, uh, followed by a low vision rehabilitation fellowship. So I'm, I'm particularly interested in uh, retinal diseases and, and how they correlate to functional implications, um, how macular disease affects reading performance and other real world activities that we need to do. And so I, I've been practicing low vision rehabilitation for some time, but have a special interest in, in how macular diseases affect um, reading performance and other activities of daily living. My practice of low vision rehabilitation, I was introduced to uh, Dr. Gordon Lake's um, MN Read. Uh, immediately I saw that this test had tremendous utility. It wasn't widely being um, used uh, when I initially started doing low vision rehabilitation, but it has a, a number of um, uh, wonderful attributes that, that make it particularly uh, useful. If you're wishing to increase somebody's reading performance, there's nothing like doing a reading test to ascertain whether or not the readings. It tells you something a single letter acuity definitely doesn't. And I quickly can see in, in using it that uh, by looking for the critical print size, where reading starts to slow, it gave you a good starting point of predicting magnification. So I've often said that if I was uh, banished to a deserted island and only had one test to take with me and asked to practice low vision rehabilitation, I would take the MN read. It's a, it's a useful, wonderful test. Interestingly, the uh, 4M unit size block on this test gave me an idea. As I listened to people read this test, uh, it was usually after I had performed macular perimeters in the scanning laser thomoscope uh, on the patient. So I knew what the scotoma pattern was, where uh, the field defects were relative to fixation. With individuals that had a left-sided scotoma relative to fixation, relative to their PRL, they made a mistake on this block that was kind of uh, um, commonly uh, occurring and interesting. The, the text reads, my father asked me to help the two men carry the box inside. When people had a left-sided blind spot, they would often mistake two men for women. So they would read, my father asked me to help the women carry the box inside. The T would disappear. And I realized that um, that was uh, being verbalized because it didn't break the context. Because um, you know, scotomas are going to make letters come and go and disappear. That kind of pattern probably was happening all the time, but it was often not verbalized if a letter disappeared or if there was a mistake that didn't fit the contextual clues. So that gave me an idea to uh, format the MN read test that Gordon did, similar to how um, uh, Gail Watson did on her pepper test, which just goes for reading test, where she used random words. And thus we came up with the, the concept for the uh, SK read, which is the same layout uh, you know, as, as the uh, MN read. And instead of sentences, it uses uh, random words and letters where it's specifically designed to bait people for mistakes, where letters uh, can easily be dropped from words and leave them with something meaningful that will be verbalized. So it's similar in appearance to the uh, MN read, but this one is specifically designed to look for the interrelationship of scotomas with reading performance and to try to uh, give the clinician a quick idea of where scotomas um, are interfering, whether it's right or left or both, and uh, it has been particularly useful in, in, in that aspect. So I recommend that both tests be done on a low vision patient. When I did this fellowship with Dr. Fletcher back in 2007 and was impressed by the results of the SK read compared to those ones from the MN read, especially because patients performed so differently if they had a central scotoma. And that uh, pushed me to develop an Italian version of the SK read. And what I do usually do in my practice is to uh, compare the two tests. So I usually s begin with the MN read and then I go on with the SK read. And this uh, gives the patient the mm, awareness, if he has a central scotoma, of what he, his reading performance can be uh, delayed or altered by uh, uh, words that you cannot uh, foresee at the beginning uh, compared to the easy sentences that are listed on the MN read. The uh, MN read is going to give you your fluency for reading and your prediction of what magnification is necessary 
the DSK read gives you a whole different set of information about how the scotomas are interfering with reading. It has particular relevance when you're not reading continuous text, narrative kind of material. When you're trying to read uh, the pharmacy, the number on your prescription bottle so that they can refill your prescription so that when you're disputing um, a credit card discrepancy and you have to read them the reference number for your uh, credit card transaction or when you're reading the number off your credit card or your bank statement or a recipe or anything that has numbers and letters that may not give you a contextual clue about what they could be so that you can't tell uh, whether you've read something right or wrong just by it flowing in the context. That uh, has a lot of relevance for uh, those spot reading kind of activities but it also has an interaction on continuous text reading and would explain why people are slow in reading uh, when they're maybe not verbalizing um, mistakes. So for example, on this block of text right here, it starts with S, C, S, gold, D, edge. So there's a mixture of single letters and words. The single letters obviously are, are, are not words, and you ask the person to read whatever's there. And uh, if you have a two-letter word and um, you miss one of the letters, it will be read as a single letter. Words like gold, uh, if you happen to have a left-sided scotoma, you might read that as old instead of gold. Or there, you might confuse the first letter and make it told or mold or sold. Um, theme is a particularly good word for the other side of the word. If you have a right-sided scotoma, uh, I'll often hear people read it as them or then or the or the me or sometimes they drop the um, E off of here and they make it the my. So there's a number of different uh, kind of errors they can make that are indicative of obviously there's a defect on the, the right hand side. So this uh, goes along with what you found on your visual field testing, whether it be a, um, a tangent field or a, a macular perimetry test of some sort. But even without an expensive um, piece of equipment with this test, you can get a very quick idea of how scotomas are influencing reading performance. Uh, so it, it's a very different kind of information you get from this from what you get on the MN read. Like the MN read, quickly administered, doesn't take a lot of time. You get the different sizes of text so you can see where the scotomas are starting to uh, cause difficulties. Um, same as the MN read, if you have a ring scotoma, you'll have a lot of difficulty with the bigger sizes, maybe mistakes on the right and left side of it's a ring scotoma, speeding up as you go down and then slowing down as you get to the limits of, of resolution um, um, again. Uh, but you get um, information that is unique from the MN read, uh, how the macular scotomas are affecting reading performance is a, a unique piece of information you get from here. And I advocate that these tests should both be done on a low vision patient. That's its application in low vision. I think it has tremendous potential utility also for retinal practices or for any ophthalmology or optometry practice where you're dealing with people with retinal diseases, especially in retinal practices where you're treating patients for um, macular disease. If you only do single letter acuity, you're only measuring a small part of the macula, the, the fovea or where fixation is, and your uh, anti-VEGF injections or whatever treatments you're rendering for this person um, are affecting more of the macula than just that central uh, hot location where they're reading single letters. When you read the MN read or the SK read, and it's especially evident in the SK read where you're, you're, you can see by the verbalization of, of the errors, you're looking at a much wider piece of macular real estate than you are with single letter acuity. So if your treatments are affecting you know, globally um, the, 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 the macula with uh, exudation and, and uh, with, with uh, scarring and, and what you're trying to prevent by your treatments, this gives you a much better idea of globally how you're affecting the macula than just doing single letter acuity. So I would uh, recommend this to be of tremendous significance for uh, retina practitioners that are treating maculas. And for a follow-up, I've heard it said many times in retina practices, patients telling the doctor, I've had a significant improvement or a significant decrease, and the doctor saying, well, the scores are the same, your acuity is the same. So the patient's subjective um, appreciation of getting better or getting worse uh, isn't shown by single letter acuity. Unfortunately, too many of my colleagues in, in uh, retina circles assume that the visual acuity is telling the whole story. And I think uh, you can get a, a lot better idea of why these patients are giving you what appears to be just a subjective improvement or decrease in their vision that isn't measured by acuity if you look at a wider area of the macula with something like the uh, SK read. So this has, I think, clinical applications in day-to-day -day retina practice. And certainly, I think, 
has very uh, great potential for uh, research implications. If you're trying to see, does your treatment improve macular function? Again, if all you're looking at is um, single letter acuity and, and perhaps uh, an anatomical uh, measure such as a OCT, uh, that, that may not show the improvement that a real-world activity like reading an SK read chart uh, might show. I think it's particularly sensitive for uh, macular diseases and might be useful in, in that regard also. So those are some quick ideas that I had about how this test might be uh, useful to uh, a couple of different audiences, the low vision rehabilitation practitioners, uh, both uh, ophthalmologists, optometrists, and even therapists, occupational therapists, and so on working with uh, patients, and in a, uh, a clinical practice, uh, where you're dealing with uh, uh, macular diseases of various uh, sorts.